So let's now turn our attention to the all pairs shortest path problems where we try to find the paths, shortest paths between every pair of vertices in a graph. So recall that we are working with weighted graphs. We allow negative edge weights but not negative cycles because with negative cycles the shortest path is not well defined. With negative weights it is well defined. We saw that the Bellman Ford algorithm allows us to generalize Dijkstra's algorithm and compute single source shortest paths in weighted graphs with negative weights but without negative cycles. So now we want to further generalize this and compute not just the shortest paths from a single source but the shortest paths between every pair of vertices. So as we explained at the beginning an example would be if you are trying to run a travel website or, or a, an airline website and somebody wants to find the minimum cost or the minimum time uh, flight or train between any pair of cities. So we made the following observation about shortest paths, okay, that a shortest path even in the presence of negative weights will never loop because we can always remove the loop without increasing the length of the path. So therefore a shortest path never visits the same vertex twice and has length at most n minus 1. So we exploited this algorithm in one way for Bellman Ford and we will find that we can use it now for an inductive algorithm for all pairs shortest paths. Right? So we will come up with an inductive solution of how to build up the shortest paths. So we are basically going to build up shortest paths in terms of vaguely their length but more specifically what vertices we allow in between. So the simplest shortest path you can imagine between a pair of vertices is just a single edge. right? So if you have a single edge and this happens to be the shortest path then you are in good shape. But in general this may not be the shortest path because even if there is such an edge there may be a way because of negative uh, because of edge weights or even because of negative edge weights of reaching from i to j by a longer path of edges but with a shorter overall cost. But what we do know because of this characterization of shortest paths is that this path from i to j goes through some intermediate vertices all of which are different from each other. No vertex is visited twice and secondly. No, none of these vertices is either i or j. There is no point in coming back to i and then going to j. So there is no loop anywhere in this path. So what we will do for this inductive thing is to restrict what can happen in between i and j. Okay, what are the vertices that are allowed in, and we will gradually increase the set. If we allow any vertex then of course we will get arbitrary shortest paths. So recall that vertices are numbered 1 to n. So we will compute a quantity w k of i j to be the weight of the shortest path from i to j where we restrict the vertices that can be used to go from i to j to be between 1 and k. In other words we have the set of vertices v right so we cut it off saying we have 1 to k and we have k plus 1 to n and we say that only these vertices can be used in the path. Now the endpoints themselves may not be need not be but if the point is that if the endpoint is outside Okay, then it can still, so I could have a one vertex here and then it could have a path which goes like this and then come back here. Right? So, so it only says that the intermediate vertices, so when I start with i and go to j, what happens in between lies in the set 1 to k. Right? So in particular if k is 0 because our numbering is 1 to n, it says that the vertices that can appear cannot be include include 1. So in other words if I have w0 then it says all of the vertices 1 to n cannot appear on the path. So the only way that we can have such a shortest path is with a direct edge. Right? So w0 the base case of this inductive definition says that the shortest paths between i and j which exclude all vertices from 1 to n are of the form edges between i and j. Okay? So now since this is an inductive definition what we have to say is supposing we know the shortest paths which use 1 to k minus 1 then how do I compute the shortest paths that use 1 to k, right. So we know all among all the paths which use at most 1 to k minus 1 what is the shortest path from i to j. How do we now compute if we allow vertex k also to be used how do we compute what would be the shortest path from i to j. So there are two cases. The first case is this extra vertex k is not useful. The shortest path even if I include k does not use vertex k it is enough to use 1 to k minus 1. In this case the shortest distance from w uh, i to j using 1 to k is the same as the shortest distance from i to j using k minus 1. So I can say w k of i j is the same as w k minus 1 i j. On the other hand 
it could be that using k does give us a non trivial improvement right so we have now some path which goes from i to j and on the way it visits k so if it visits k on the way then we can break it up as a path from i to k and a path from k to j but notice that we have already said that this vertex k or any vertex for that matter which appears on this path if it is the shortest path appears only once right so if if k appears here there is no k between i and k and there is no k between k and j this means that i have a path from i to k already which goes through 1 to k minus 1 and i have a path from k to j already which goes through 1 to k minus 1 and i am combining these two right so i can break up the path as a path from i to k and a path to k to j each of which uses only 1 to k minus 1 and what is the cost of that path well we inductively know that we have the cost of the best path from i to k using only 1 to k minus 1 in wk minus 1 we also have the best path from k to j in our in our uh, uh, matrix wk minus 1 so if i add these two this must be the best way of going back okay right so combining the cases we say that either we don't use k in which case we take the value of the old matrix or we do use k in which case we combine two entries going by k in the old matrix and we take the smaller of these two right so whichever one of these is smaller will be the correct value of the shortest distance from i to j going through 1 to k so this gives us an immediate algorithm which is called the floyd warshall algorithm so we start off with a matrix representing the function w0 so w0 has entries which are exactly the edge weights so if there is an edge from i to j so w0 i to j says there is a direct path of that weight because now remember w0 cannot go through any intermediate path and if there is no edge since i can't go through any intermediate vertex w0 ij must be infinity now for k in in 1 to n i basically repeat this n times i first allow 1 to be used so i compute w1 from w0 and how do i do that i use the update rule we said earlier that is we take the minimum of what you already have plus the possibility of going through the newly introduced vertex then i allow 1 and 2 then i allow 1 2 and 3 and obviously if i have allowed 1 2 3 up to n i have allowed all the vertices to appear in between wn will now have the shortest paths with no constraints so i need to do this update exactly n times so that after n times i have captured the shortest weight paths which include any arbitrary combination of vertices on the path so the actual code is again like bellman ford extremely straightforward right you just have first an initialization which sets every weight to infinity and then updates the non trivial weights uh for those edges which are in the graph so we are keeping track of this function uh w0 of ij by a three dimensional matrix so i and j represent the two vertices and the zero represents the iteration number right so initially W zero i j is either the weight of i j if there is an edge or its infinity and that's what these first two steps are doing and now we do this n n times we do this iteration that is we update all the w i j's at uh, at level k to be the minimum of the w i j's at level k minus one or the sum of the two right so implicitly here should have been written so this is for i in for i equal to 1 to n for j equal to 1 to n okay so we have this update rule and we do this blindly n times and at the end we claim that the matrix w in the entry k has got the correct shortest paths for all pairs of vertices so let's look at the same example that we saw for bellman ford okay so initially we assign to each so w0 okay has the edge weight so we have an adjacency matrix like representation in which for instance we say 1 to 2 there's an edge of weight 10 7 to 6 there's an edge of weight weight minus 1 and so on right so we just duplicate all of these edges in the matrix and everything else is left at infinity now from w0 we go to w1 by considering all new paths that we can find by going from 1 but now notice that there is nothing that is coming into one so this is signified by the fact that the column one has infinity no edge goes into one so no other vertex can use the fact that one is connected to 2 and 8 right so if you update using a update rule you will find that w1 is actually equal to w0 nothing changes because allowing one to be used in between two vertices doesn't help us it is not in between any two vertices i cannot go from anywhere to one and then from one to that vertex 
on the other hand if i can now include two then i can do interesting things i can go for example from 1 to 2 to 6 and i can go from 7 to 1 to 6 right so allowing two and one as an intermediate vertex so one doesn't help right now but allowing two gives me something so if i if i now look at w1 i don't need w0 anymore if i look at w1 then i will as i said be able to explore paths through two so in particular two goes to six so anything pointing into two so 7 to 2 to 6 3 to 2 to 6 and 1 to 2 to 6 these three entries will get updated right so 1 to 2 to 6 so i get a new entry 12 3 to 2 to 6 so i get a new entry 3 And seven to two to six, so I get minus four plus two is minus two. Okay. Now from W two, likewise, I'll do compute W three again. To compute W three, we'll come back to this later. I don't need W one; I only need W two. So I can throw away W one for now and just look at W two. Right. So now having got, uh, now I'm allowing myself to use one, two, three. So I will look for things that can go through three. Right. So for instance, now through three, I can go from six to four, for example. Okay. So I will get. entries of that form so i can go from <clears throat> 6 to 4 with a, a new thing i can also go from 6 to 2 right so now i have a new way of going from 6 to 2 okay so that also gets updated and interestingly i also discovered that there is now a path from 6 to 6 right because earlier i didn't know that but now that i'm allowed to go through both 2 and 3 i can go from 6 to 6 so i've discovered this loop which has a positive weight if it didn't have a positive weight we were in trouble because this didn't have a, a well defined solution and so on okay so you can just keep on doing this we will not update uh, up to the but if you would now go all the way and you go up to w8 okay then after you allow everything from 1 to 8 to be an intermediate thing this matrix will actually compute all pair shortest path between any ij so this algorithm it is very easy to see that the complexity is order n cube because you have n iteration and in each iteration we are updating the entire matrix which has n square entries okay so there is not much you can do to improve this because it is an adjacency matrix based algorithm we cannot move to lists we don't have to compute any minimum maximum so there's nothing much we can do it's an n cube algorithm okay notice that it sort of solves as a trivial case the wellman ford algorithm because once you have computed all pairs okay so this generalizes as a solution Bellman fold because in particular if you now want all it all the shortest path from a given uh, s to everything you just have to look up that particular row in the floyd warshall matrix right you look at the row s and all the entries will say the shortest path from s but remember that in that particular case if i only wanted from s bellman fold with a clever uh, adjacency list representation would take order m n whereas here this will require order n q right So this does generalize Bellman Ford in the sense you get the same answers that you would have got from Bellman Ford and more, but you are always spending n cube time. Whereas if you had very few edges in your graph, which is typically the case, Bellman Ford will be more efficient. So if you are using, uh, you only want to do single source shortest path, you should not typically jump directly to Floyd Warshall. You should probably do Bellman Ford instead. About space complexity, so we said that we are going to represent each w zero, w one, etc. as one. Uh, coordinate so we have basically have n times n times n because we have n n times n is the actual matrix we have n of these matrices because we have level 0 level 1 and up to level k uh, level n right but we saw that in our worked out example that when you need to compute the level 1 we only need level 0 then we can throw away level 0 and when you need to compute level 2 you need only level 1 so in some sense you can keep only two copies and keep switching back and forth right you overwrite the zeroth level as a second level you overwrite the first level as a third level and so on so you need only two slices as i'll call it of this three dimensional matrix at a time so you can just keep oscillating between these two slices so overall you have two n squared space right so we don't normally worry about space but just an observation that in this particular thing you don't really need to have this n cube array you can have two n squared array or an n squared array with uh, two indices and keep oscillating between the two and get the same effect because you only need one copy to compute the other copy so let's uh, conclude this discussion with some historical remarks so floyd warshall as you can see from the hyphenation is a hybrid name for this algorithm and actually there are two distinct algorithms uh, which comprise it which have a very similar structure so the original algorithm which was proposed by warshall is for what is called transitive closure so transitive closure is exactly the same as computing a path from edge relation so supposing you have a relationship like friend right so you know among a group of people who is a direct friend of whom 
then you might want to ask who knows indirectly right so i know somebody indirectly if i have a friend who knows that person or if i have a friend who has a friend who knows that person and so on so knowing somebody indirectly is the transitive closure of the friend relation in the same way in a general i mean so in every graph if you put the friend or the whatever relation you want as the edge relation the transitive closure is a path relation right so you want to have, you have an adjacency matrix which represents the edges you want to compute a path matrix which represents the paths which are the pairs of vertices computed by uh, which are connected by paths and so washel described the similar algorithm what we wrote now and we will just do a, do it in a little detail in the next couple of slides to do this compute p from a and what floyd uh, observed was that you can adapt the same algorithm so in washel's algorithm you are only checking is there a path and floyd's algorithm says that you can actually adapt it to compute shortest paths so the idea is very similar to what we have seen before let's go through it quickly so we have an adjacency matrix a which tells us the edges so aj is, aij is 1 if there is an edge and we want a path matrix pij is 1 if there is a path from i to j so we will again compute iteratively this quantity pkij which says that there is a path and this path uses only the vertices in 1 to k so k plus 1 to n cannot appear in the path right and again the end points are not included so i and j are arbitrary it's what is between i and j which is restricted by this uh, superscript k so between i and j you can only see things from 1 to k so as before if you do p0 it says nothing can appear because you rule out everything from 1 to n okay therefore p0 is just the adjacency matrix okay. so now we have a very similar update rule so if i if i know the paths which can be discovered using 1 to k minus 1 what are the paths i can discover using 1 to k right so if there is a path already without using k then i can just keep that path so we could either have that pk so remember now this is is there a path is there not a path so this is like an adjacency matrix there's no weight is it so it's a zero one matrix or a true false matrix so initially the adjacency matrix has one or true whenever there is an edge false whenever there's no edge so if i have already got an entry true with k minus 1 then i can keep it on the other hand maybe i don't have an entry true i have to go by k but once again that means that there is a path from i to k and there's a path from k to j and and here i use only k minus 1 and here i use only k minus 1 because k needs to appear only once just like in a shortest path if i'm just looking for some connectivity that i don't gain anything by going back from k to k because i can just remove that and i and j will remain connected right so i need to only look for paths which have one copy of every vertex along them so therefore i can assume there is a path from i to k which does not use anything outside 1 to k minus 1 and likewise from k to j Right. So here now, instead of min and plus, my operations now become or and and. So either I want a path from i to k and a path from k to j, or I want an existing path from i to j which never use k at all. Right. So I have this and operation for combining these two existing paths. So this should be p, sorry. And then I have an or operation which combines it with case one. Right. So earlier we had w k minus one i j. and then we had this w k minus 1 i k plus w k minus 1 k j and we took the min of this okay so here instead of this plus we are using and and instead of this min we are using or right so you can see that the algorithm is not exactly the same but it's very similar so this was the algorithm proposed by warshel right so you initialize everything to false and then again this should uh, be for i is equal to n or j is equal to 1 to n so you initialize all the paths to false then you set explicitly that the zeroth level paths are true if there is an edge and then you keep updating the kth level path by either saying that there was already a k minus 1 level path or i can find two k minus 1 level paths via an intermediate level k uh, intermediate vertex k right so it's a very similar thing we just have these operations of or and and instead of min and plus and then washel's algorithm was used for transitive closure and floyd generalized it for shortest paths and these work in the presence of negative edges it doesn't matter floyd's algorithm doesn't care whether the edges are negative or positive so long as there are no negative cycles